Imagine you've just said goodbye to everything and everyone you know. For the next three years, a SpaceX spacecraft is your home, your prison, and your only lifeline. Ahead of you lies millions of miles of darkness until Mars. But the real journey isn't against distance, it's against time and against yourself. Your daily decisions about what to eat, how to maintain your sanity, and which technology to trust will determine whether you make history or become stardust. So, would you survive? The countdown reaches zero. A crushing force presses you against your seat as the Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built by humanity, roars and tears through the sky. Earth, there in the window, becomes a smaller and smaller blue and white marble. For nine long months, this will be your universe, a metal cylinder traveling at an absurd speed through the void. And the first enemy isn't an asteroid or engine failure. It comes from within. It's your own body, rebelling. Without gravity to pull you down, your muscles, which evolved over millennia fighting against it, begin to atrophy. Your bones, without the need to support your weight, start a process of decalcification, losing density each day. Research shows that astronauts can lose bone mass at a rate much higher than someone with osteoporosis here on Earth. Your first choice for survival is actually an obligation, a brutal exercise routine, two hours a day, every day. Treadmills, bikes, and resistance equipment become your best friends. Each squat, each pull, is a direct battle against frailty. Ignore this? Don't even think about it. The consequence would be arriving at Mars so weak that you couldn't even stand up under the gravity there, which is only 38% of ours. While your body fights physics, your mind faces a more treacherous adversary. Confinement. The days blend into an endless routine. The excitement of departure gives way to heavy silence, broken only by the hum of the ship's systems. You're trapped in a tiny space with the same people, the same jokes, the same faces. Small irritations become major conflicts. The loneliness here is a paradox. You're surrounded by people, but feel terribly alone. Your only connection to Earth is communication, but it's a fragile line with an agonizing delay. Depending on where the planets are, a simple high can take 22 minutes to arrive and another 22 for the response to come back. Now imagine having a medical emergency, a panic attack, and needing to wait 44 minutes for help that might not even arrive in time. Depression and anxiety are real risks, documented in all long mission simulations. Your second choice for survival is mental. You need to force yourself to have psychological discipline, follow schedules, have hobbies, use virtual reality to escape, and most importantly, talk openly with the crew and the ground team. Mental resilience becomes a resource as vital as oxygen. It's your ability to find purpose in monotony that will determine whether your team arrives at Mars United or in pieces. Months have passed. You're in the middle of nowhere, far from Earth and far from Mars, crossing deep space. The protection of our planet's magnetic field is just a memory. Now you face an invisible and silent danger, radiation. There are two major threats. The first are galactic cosmic rays, super-energized particles spat out by supernovas. They travel almost at the speed of light and pass through the ship's hull and your body, damaging your DNA and increasing cancer risk. The second are solar storms, unpredictable explosions on the sun that launch jets of particles. Without Earth's shield, a strong storm could give you a lethal dose of radiation in hours. Your third choice for survival is trusting technology. The starship has shielding, but it's not perfect. Water stored in the ship's walls helps create an extra barrier. If a solar storm is detected, an alarm goes off. You and the crew run to the storm shelter, a more protected area in the center of the ship, and hope for the best. It's cosmic Russian roulette. 
Every flash of light you see with your eyes closed isn't your imagination. It's a cosmic particle passing through your retina. While radiation attacks your cells, another basic concern appears, resources. Every gram of food, every drop of water has been calculated. Carrying supplies for three years is impossible, so the key is self-sufficiency. The food isn't exactly a banquet. It's a mixture of pre-packaged, freeze-dried foods and, most importantly, vegetables grown in a small hydroponic system on board. These little greenhouses are more than a source of calories. They're a green piece of earth in the middle of the void, a relief for the mind. Water works in a closed loop. Every drop is reused. Your urine, your sweat, the humidity in the air. Everything is collected, purified, and becomes drinkable again. The idea might be disgusting, but life support technology makes the recovered water purer than most tap water on Earth. However, this technology is still being perfected and has never been tested on a mission as long and complex as this one. Your fourth choice for survival is managing all of this with an iron fist. What if the garden fails? What if the water purifier isn't as efficient? You would have to make terrible decisions about rationing. Eat less? Limit water for hygiene? Every decision affects everyone's health and morale. This is the harsh reality. The line between survival and catastrophe is as thin as your ship's hull. After months that seemed like a lifetime, a red dot in the darkness begins to grow. Mars. The destination is in sight, but the most dangerous moment of the trip is yet to come. Entry, descent, and landing. An event known as the Seven Minutes of Terror. Mars's atmosphere is more than 100 times thinner than Earth's thick enough to generate infernal heat through friction, but too thin to slow down a heavy ship like the Starship with parachutes alone. It's a choreographed dance with death. The ship enters the upper atmosphere at almost 12,400 miles per hour. The heat shield on the Starship's belly becomes incandescent. Inside, you're thrown from side to side. And the team on Earth? They're mere spectators. Because of the communication delay, they'll only know if you survived or not minutes after everything has happened. You're on your own in this. After atmospheric braking, the ship is still at supersonic speed. Now, the Starship's Raptor engines reignite for landing. It's a maneuver of absurd complexity that needs to work perfectly. Your final choice for survival is, again, trust. Trust in the engineers who designed everything, in the thousand tests and simulations, and in your own crew to react to any unforeseen circumstance. The ship turns vertical and, under engine power, gently descends onto the red dust of a place like Jezero Crater. And then, silence. And a relief that completely overwhelms you. The door opens. You descend the stairs and your foot touches Martian soil. The fine red dust covers your boot. You look at the alien horizon, at the stone plains and the pinkish sky of a new world. You're no longer a traveler. You're a pioneer. You survived. Not just because of the brilliant engineering that brought you here, but because of the hundreds of choices you made along the way. The choice to fight against bodily decay, to master mental isolation, to protect yourself from the cosmos, and to manage every resource as if your life depended on it. Because it did. This hypothetical three-year journey tested you to the limit. But now you would be there, a representative of humanity on a new planet. And the real mission would just be beginning building a future for our species among the stars. The question then returns to you. Knowing all of this, the physical sacrifices, the mental challenges, and the mortal dangers, would you embark on this journey? Leave your answer here in the comments and don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share. Thank you for embarking on another journey with me, and until next time.